So, before today, how many of you had heard of Bitcoin? Look at that! <laughs> Almost everyone. How many of you actually have some Bitcoin? I can see, there's a few hands up, probably sort of 10, 12. How many of you know what Bitcoin is? Okay, a fair few of you. I'm going to explain Bitcoin in three words. It's magic <laughs> internet money. <laughs> Forget everything else you hear, that's all you need to know. You can send Bitcoin to anyone, anywhere in the world, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Or you can even send it to machines. And you don't need any permission, you don't need a bank account, you don't need anything. It's decentralized and open source, which means it's owned and run by all of us. So there's no company, and there's no CEO, and there's no staff, there's not even an office. It is very, very strange, but it does work. So I'm a game developer, and I've been obsessed with Bitcoin for about two years. In fact, that there is a physical gold Bitcoin, and I own one of those. It's worth quite a lot of money, but I like it because a digital currency can have a physical coin, which is truly strange. I haven't got it with me because I store it in a, in a safety deposit box in a bank, of all places. <laughs> they don't know it's a Bitcoin. Um, I got into Bitcoin because a fan of one of our games asked me to accept it so they could buy our game with Bitcoin. And eventually, a few months later, I looked into it. And in fact, I released the first independent games bundle that you could only buy using Bitcoin. But I've come to realize that it's more than just a technology. Uh, it's more than just a currency. It's actually a technology, and it's one we're only just beginning to scratch the surface of. But I'm also starting to wonder if perhaps we're a bit like those scientists who, whose work unwittingly led to the atom bomb. And to explain that, we'll have to go down the uh, Bitcoin rabbit hole. So I've recently been using something called ChangeTip. And with ChangeTip, you can tip people real money, albeit in Bitcoin, over social networks like Twitter or Facebook. And I've been tipping game developers who post screenshots that I like on Twitter. And I think it's a really cool way to show your appreciation for people's hard work. It's tipping. But let's look at some uses of Bitcoin that aren't anything to do with money. And I'm sure you won't have heard of any of these. Wall Street. The CEO of Overstock, a large company in the US, is funding a project to create decentralized stock exchanges. What that means is stock exchanges which will be more efficient and more accessible for all of us and not run entirely by bankers because we don't need more bankers in the world. Even IBM are using Bitcoin to power the Internet of Things. So in the future, your fridge and your toaster They'll work together, and they'll buy the cheapest or the most ethical electricity for you. It could even change voting, because Bitcoin potentially can be used for safer voting than paper votes or e-voting. It's less corruptible. Now, in many countries where they have to send UN observers, and perhaps they should send them to the US, um, <laughs> Bitcoin could really change voting. It could help democracy. Bitcoin is actually the most secure network in the world. Whatever you may have heard on the, me on the news, on the me in the media, it is the most secure network in the world. And it can be used for some really interesting things, including keys to your house or to your car. It can be used for company shares. It can even be used to get tickets for a gig, so your ticket on your phone could actually be d handled in Bitcoin. But the critical point is, no one could copy that key, and no one could copy that ticket. And no one could fake it either because it's Bitcoin, so it's magic. <laughs> um, we call it smart property because you can actually program it to do stuff. But you can also think of it as magic internet property if it helps. We do all love lawyers, I know, um, probably. Um, but I started thinking, um, how could Bitcoin help my life and how could it improve the life of others, not just as money? Now, a few years ago, I had a property dispute over some repairs, which meant you have to go to court or small claims. 
And that's, it can be really expensive, it's really stressful, it's difficult. And that's in the country, in the UK, where we have quite good access to law. But I started thinking, what if we could run law or legal contracts and agreements, what if we could run them on a computer and the computer enforces them when there's a problem? If it could be done, it could empower millions of people around the world who don't have access to law, where it's too expensive, or where it's too corrupted. And I'm not the only one who thinks this can be done. Even my lawyer said it can be done. In fact, he specializes in it. Now, a project called Ethereum raised $15 million for their decentralized approach to these contracts, to this law. That's the second biggest crowdfunder in history. Second only to a game, so I've got the best of both worlds. I don't have $15 million, unfortunately, but our own experiment would allow anyone in the world with internet access to easily create a simple contract. They could share it, and they could run it, which means they can run it on a computer. And it's called a self-enforcing digital contract. And what that means is, it's a contract that's actually a computer program, and it controls money or smart property. And only the contract can control it. So if it's mine, I can't touch the money. Only the contract, only the computer can move it around. And that's never been possible before. So an example of how it could be useful, someone could create a community, uh, a community savings website. And the contract could pay out your local pensioners when the temperature outside goes below freezing. So it can be used for cold weather payments. But no one could steal that money, and no one could change how it's used because it's only controlled by the contract, which means it's completely safe and it's completely trust uh, trustworthy, which is really important. Now, we don't know what projects people will create with these smart contracts, what applications they'll make, but it's going to be really interesting to find out I think they could do a lot of good in a lot of countries. I did, though, wake up yesterday after a nightmare. Because I know that in the future, in fact, very, very soon, you'll be able to create applications and contracts that run forever. There's no off switch. You cannot turn it off unless you turn off the internet. So no one can turn these programs off in the future. Now, the US government have been spending a lot of time shutting down uh, darknet marketplaces like Silk Road. Those are places where you can go and take down, um, you can buy illegal drugs. There's a group developing a project called Open Bazaar using the technologies that I'm talking about, which is a decentralized marketplace. And that means it can never be shut down. No one can block it. Everyone could always use it to buy anything they want including drugs and guns and other things. Could be legal, could be illegal. And that might be your nightmare. But it's not actually mine. I quite like it. Um, my nightmare is this. Someone creates an assassination contract, and they run it on something like Ethereum, which we can't turn off. No one can. And they use Open Bazaar to set up the hits and hire assassins. And the worst thing is, we can all see this. It's completely public. It's like on Twitter, but no one can turn it off. We could have real-world assassination games, and I might have helped that, and that's quite scary. It could even be worse. My favorite film growing up in the 80s was Terminator, but the real enemy in Terminator wasn't Arnold Schwarzenegger, or perhaps his slightly dodgy acting. It was um, Skynet which is an AI that turned against humanity. So what happens when we add AI to these applications that we can't turn off and that can control money and property and everything? It could create its own assassination contracts to take down its enemies or even its creators. And maybe people like me are helping create a real world Skynet. And I don't know. I don't know the answer. So I'm going to leave you with this. Who do you trust more to create the future? Bankers and politicians, or software engineers and, and Linux. Thank you. <laughs>